I want to start now. The essence of this course, that is communication in English 3. As you can see, I said the course code is GNS 302. And the course title is communication in English 3. Now, the essence of this course is to further expose you to the principles and practice of written communication. It is designed to give you the enablement to master skills in the use of English in your profession. Why? Because nobody can see you and place you. It is with your mouth and your hand that you can place yourself. So we need you to be able to write very well. I say the principles and practice of written communication. So we need you to master the skills in the use of English. So that wherever you find yourself, your certificate will not be in doubt. You'll be able to express yourself adequately well. That's the essence of this course. I said to further expose you to the principles and practice of written communication because we know that you have been writing before this time. If you have not been writing, you will not be at the level you are now. So it is a fact that you are exposed already. So the essence of this course is to further expose you to the principles and practice of written communication. Now let me ask, what do you understand by written communication? I'm asking a question. What do you understand by written communication? Our first topic is under one one now. Explain the principles of letter writing. Before we go to the principles proper, it is expedient for us to know under which letter writing surface. There is what we call correspondence. Correspondence is C-O-R-R-E-S-P-O-N-D-E-N-C-E. -E. Correspondence plays roles that are vital and uncultivable in our lives. Not only in our lives, in the lives of individuals, organizations, corporate entities, and the community as a whole. This term, correspondence, means all purposeful writing that is intended to convey a message, a message, information, or thoughts to a person, group of persons, companies, institutions, or organizations. So correspondence is the various means by which people, staff, employees, and employers get in contact with each or one another through writing. That text message that I normally send about is letter writing. Mm -hmm. Anytime you put your thoughts, ideas into writing as against oral, it is correspondence. That's why we say it is all purposeful writing intended to convey a message to another person. Correspondence is communication in writing. There are different methods by which you can pass your messages across to your recipients. But the moment you decide to put it into writing, that is correspondence. That is written communication. So it is all purposeful writing that gives you the enablement to pass your messages across. All over the world today, people want to get in contact with one another, and this in turn gives rise to different means of passing information. One of these means is letter writing, which is regarded as correspondence. 
Correspondence on its own can be internal or external. It can be intrapersonal or interpersonal. And as the name suggests, it is internal or intra. Intra is I-N-T-R-E. Personal when it emanates from within an organization. That is communication that takes place within a company, within institutions, within organization. Yabatek as an institution is an example. And in Yabatek, we do communicate both formally and informally. We have external slash inter, I-N-T-E-R, personal communication. And this is when it comes, that is when it emanates from customers, observers, competitors, government agencies to another government agencies. We have different types of correspondence, beginning with letters. That's number one type of correspondence. We have memorandum, we have circular, we have house journal, we have gazette, we have bulletin. We have different types of correspondence. The most important thing for you to know is that correspondence is all purposeful writing that is intended to convey a message. Among other means of sending messages, expressing yourself, passing one information or the other, letter writing is the most economical means. It is a way of sending or means of sending message, expressing opinion, wishes, sympathy, condolences, requests for information. It's a way of giving one information or the other to another person, of expressing yourself, giving ideas, putting your thoughts into writing, whether formally or informally. There will forever be different types of letter. You know, in its ordinary form, it is a message that is written down on paper and usually put in an envelope and sent to somebody. So letters are classified into different forms, different types, based on the reason or desire for writing the letter. So it is your reason or desire that will determine the type of letter you are going to write. Majorly, the two types are personal slash informal letters differently from business slash formal letters. The two of them have slightly different form and style, as well as use of language. Slightly different form, style, as well as use of language. So when you decide you want to write as a method of passing your message across, it is referred to as write-up or letter writing and it is very economical. Like I said earlier, there are different methods of communicating to another person. But letter writing is old. Apart from that, it is still viable till today because of the advantages that we have in writing. You know, when you write, it is permanent. When you write, it is for every purpose. When you write, it cannot be denied. So writing is still very important in our day-to-day -day activities. What are the functions of a letter? Number one, you know, letter is a source of information to all staff in an organization. Apart from that, it is equally it can be informal, that is between one person to another. It is an important source of reference 
in view of its permanent nature. I've said that before. It is a guide to further actions and decisions which may be taken by concerned individuals, union department, institutions, and corporate bodies. And like I said before, it is permanent. So it gives backing to all instructions, all information. It supports and boosts other media or modes of communication. And most importantly, it can be tendered and accepted in a court of law as a circumstantial evidence. So you can see that letter writing is still beneficial. Although oral communication is as old as man. But the moment uh, from the advent of writing, letter writing is still, till today, beneficial. Now, what are the principles of letter writing? Before you can produce an effective letter, you must sit down, give some thoughts to planning and organizing what to say and what not to say. The first step you should take is to determine exactly what you want your letter to achieve. Because, because I have said letter is permanent. The moment you write and it is sent, it is not redeemable again. It is irreversible. That is the essence of planning. You have to plan and organize what you intend to say. So preparing a statement of the subject of your letter will help you to clarify the purpose of the letter. I will give you some guidelines on what you should include and what you should omit. Under organizing the letter, there is the need for choice of words. Anytime you want to be involved in writing, it is expedient for you to use simple and understandable language. Yes, words that are short, simple and direct as much as possible should be used. Because most of the time when you write, you won't be there when you are going to be assessed. That is why you need to be meticulous. You need to be organized in the choice of words. When you write, especially for assessments, you must not use flamboyant words. You must not use words that are prone to misinterpretation. Because when you write and you pass it on, you may not see it again. Yes, that is why writing is very important. When you write an application letter, you don't expect to see it back. What you, are, you should be expecting is an appointment letter. So writing goes a long way, even before you, you, before you get to wherever you wish to go to. Your writing will go ahead of you there. That's why you must be meticulous, use simple words as much as possible, be direct, be straightforward, be coincise in your writing. Then completing the letter. Review your draft. Make sure your letter tells the story whatsoever you want to pass across with tact, simplicity, and clarity. Very important. Make sure you don't cancel unnecessarily. When you cancel, you render whatsoever you write unreadable, meaningless, and incommunicado. In most cases, when you write, you may not know your recipient. That's why you need to write well, so that you can get a positive assessment at every point in time that you write. You must make certain that your sentences are grammatically and semantically correct. Now, what is this grammar? Grammar has to do with structure. Whatever you want to pass across must be structured. And the semantic there is meaning. It must equally be meaningful. Because if it is meaningless, it means you don't communicate. And you may be jumping that you have written. You don't know that you have written nonsense. So anytime you are involved in the hacked ACT of writing, 
right way at all times. Very important. Now we want to consider the differences between personal slash business letters. You know, under one today, it said explain the components of a business letter. As you know already, personal slash informal letter is a type of letter written to friends, relatives, parents, or any close acquaintance. And what do you discuss? Personal issues, private or intimate affair. And the tone is usually familiar. The language is cordial, simple and clear. We have different components of letter writing. For personal letter, the parts, please write as I say it. The parts of a personal letter are listed now. I'm not going to delve much because it's a familiar theory. A, write, writer's address, which can be blocked or indented. B, date, very important. You can see that I say write date. Date is very important in whatsoever you write. If you don't write date for me, in my test, it's going to be minus three. Date is very, very compulsory in correspondence. Get used to it. Make sure before you write anything, you must write date. C is salutation. I know for personal letter, it can be anything. That is sal to salute whomever you are corresponding with. Greeting. Then D is the body of the letter, which is the contents. We have E, which is the complementary clause. And we have the last part, which is the writer's name. The writer's first name is sufficient for personal letter. There's only to put your surname or whatever. Because you are writing to a familiar person. You are writing to a known person. So there is no need for flamboyancy. Although it is whomever your recipient is that will determine the tone of your letter. You should know that when you are writing to your parents or guardian or an older relative, it is not the same as it's the same thing as writing to your friend or close acquaintance. Uh -huh. You must give or not to whom it is due. We must have taught you slang in 201, differently from register in 202 or jargons. You don't use slangs for adults. You only use it for your contemporaries. And you must write in such a way that whatsoever you write will not be referred to as jargons. So it must be meaningful at all times, even if it is personal letter. Because if you don't, it means you will not get a response, a viable response from whatsoever you write. So you must write at all times. Write well, anytime you need to write. Now, business slash formal letter. The business letter, as the name connotes, is concerned with official business transaction. It is impersonal because it is written as the official representation of the individual or business concern that is transacting one business or the other with someone else. It must be written in a language that befits the occasion. As the name suggests, it is formal. So it should be precise and straightforward, providing all the details while not neglecting proper business etiquette. Words or expressions that are prone to more than one interpretation must be avoided. Because in most cases, when you write a business letter, you don't know your recipients. You don't know whom you are corresponding with. So it is expedient for you to know what you are doing. It should be simple and clear to avoid ambiguity and confusion. Aphoristic statements such as wise or witty speech 
must be avoided as they can be misinterpreted. When you write business letters, it is not a medium to use or to display high sounding words. Contractions must not be used. If we are in the class now, we ask you to give me an example of contractions. Contractions are like abbreviations. So you must not use them in business correspondence. You must not abbreviate anything. When you abbreviate in business correspondence, your recipient may not be able to decode whatsoever you have encoded. Your recipient may feign ignorance of whatsoever you have written. Why? Because you are not supposed to abbreviate in a business correspondence. So what do you do? Pinch yourself to determine the formality or the informality of the situation you are writing, of the context under which you are writing. You must not write in haste or under tension. Anytime you want to write formally, you must organize your thoughts. The reason being that, most importantly, you may not know your recipients. And you are only one among many that is writing. So there is no time to waste. Your recipient will certainly not have, not have enough time to waste on one person when he or she has many to assess. So when you write formally, you must put into consideration your recipients and the fact that you cannot afford to fail. Or can you afford to fail? If you cannot afford to fail, then write well at every point in time. Put it into consideration that you may not know the mood your recipient will be in when he or she is assessing your paper. It is important to write well at all times. When business letter is written, in which case a company writes to another company or to an individual, of course, the letter head will be used. But if it's an individual to a company or organization, the full scap paper will be used. And this full scap must be ruled. Yes, very important. You must not trivialize anything. When you are corresponding formally, everything matters. Don't trivialize it. Don't rule anyhow, self. You must use ruler. Don't improvise by using biro with, uh, with another biro to rule. No. Use ruler. That is why the mathematical set, I always say, is for all categories of students. It's not for primary or secondary school students alone. You must be harmed with all your mat writing materials so that you can write well at every point in time. The components of a business letter are the parts of business letter. They are what business letter entails. They are the subtopics that you must know. You are not going to write them that you must know anytime you want to write a business letter. A is the writer's address. And just like the informer or personal letter, the writer's address is at the top right-hand corner of a plain stationery. Top right-hand corner. The style of writing also can either be blocked or indented with open or closed punctuation. However, if the stationery uses a letterhead with the company's name and address, then there is no need to write the address again. The writer's name should not be written as part of the address. You heard what I said. It is the writer's address. Your name should not be written as part of the address under any circumstances. After the writer's address is the date. And as I have said earlier, date is not optional. It is absolutely compulsory. It is mandatory in any business letter because of the fact that it is official business transaction that will be documented so it is mandatory 
don't ever forget not to write dates at every point in time that you have the need to write. Don't behave as if you are never told or taught. From now, ends forth. That is from now, which equally means ends forth. Anything at all you want to write, imbibe it. Get used to writing dates because it is not negotiable. After the date is the receiver's address. The receiver's address is written on the left hand corner of the letter. It con contains the title of your recipient, the name and designation of whomever is the receiver. And it is written at the left margin below the date without leaving any space while writing. The essence of writing the designation of your receiver is because it is business yes the designation is more important than the name of that person the title of the person too is equally important because it is business after the receiver's address is the salutation and salutation is how the letter begins for business letter you cannot write anyhow it is usually a dear sir. Dear sir, customarily. And if you are sure that your recipient is a woman, you can use dear madam. But you know, in most cases, you don't even know your recipient. You don't talk of being sure the sex of that person. So customarily, dear sir is appropriate. Don't bother your head about whether the person is a female or male. Just write dear sir. It is sufficient for both male and female for business correspondence. After the salutation is the subject heading. This will be E, subject heading. And this is the title or the topic of your letter, which is written on the line immediately after the salutation. Very important now. If you choose to write in an upper case, then it is optional to underline it. But if you now decide to write in a lower case, it is compulsory to highlight your topic with a line. Mark my words. If you decide to write in an upper case, it is optional to rule a line under it. But if you decide to write in a lower case, then it is compulsory. To rule a line under your title after the subject heading is the body of whatsoever you want to write the body is the content of the letter or the message the letter should not have contractions that is it should not have contracted forms which can be used in personal letters Examples of contractions are, I don't, I can't, I haven't. Instead of writing, I don't, you must write, I do not. Instead of writing, I can't, you must write, I cannot. Don't ever abbreviate. Information provided should be adequate, complete, and logically presented to aid a faithful transaction of business and as much as possible, irrelevances must be avoided. And whatsoever you write under the body must be done in paragraphs. You have been taught paragraphing in your 101, so don't learn to forget. Whatsoever you write must be paragraphed. When you paragraph your work, you make it neat. You make it presentable. You make it understandable to your reader. You make it attractive. You must take time in writing, especially when you are writing formally. After the body is the complimentary close. Where the name of the receiver is used. Yours faithfully. Where the name of the receiver is not used, sorry. Yours faithfully is the only correct complimentary close. But where the name of the receiver is used, 
yours sincerely can equally be used for business letter yours faithfully is customary just like the answer the kind of salutation to use depends on the relationship between the writer and the receiver very important after this complimentary close is the signature and this is the writer's signature i said the signature that is your signature the writer's signature and the signature comes before the name what is the essence of the signature it carries the authority and responsibility for the transaction signature is put immediately after the complimentary close your signature authenticates your write up it is compulsory it is absolutely important after the signature is the writer's name remember i said the other time that it is not writer's address and name it is writer's address under no circumstances should you put your name where you put your address so this is where to now put your name immediately after the signature you now write your name and here the writer's full name starting with the surname followed by other names at least one of your two names must be written your surname and your first name or your surname and your other names this is very very important remember a business letter is a formal letter it is different from a personal letter and you have to comply with some requirements which depend on the demands of the business what are the categories of business letters we have four categories spelled categories but pronounced categories we have four categories of a business letter number one we have information these are the letters that give one information or the other about an organization a company an institution or about the person writing this include letters of introduction inquiries application appointments the motion invitation promotion interview transfer etc we equally have sales that's number two category of a business letter and on that sales we have letters that are letters of advertoria you know that people use to advertise their business we have promotional letter we have marketing strategies contractual agreements visibility or proposal after sales we have problems and we have goodwill so there are four categories of business letters we have information sales problems and goodwill letters information letters problems sales and goodwill under problems we have letters of complaints complaints c-o-m-p-l-a-i-n-t-s we have agitations queries discontentment etc so instead of resulting to blows at any provocation you can write to that's why we have problem letters we have goodwill letters and these are letters of condolence felicitations congratulations etc letters that you write to people to congratulate them that is goodwill letter letter that you write to your friend that is goodwill letter letter that you write to acknowledge a relationship or for sustenance of relationship is a goodwill letter don't forget there are four categories of business letters number one information letters that give one information or the other we have sales we have problem letters and we have goodwill letters